fat. The fat room boys. The fat room people are people like finally doing goals, you know, finally just taking orders. You want to be in the front line. The front line is that. Let's go. No. You want to share with me uh, how to go about business? I have the strength to teach you all that because I already have a very successful business. Uh, my business is all in uh, Southeast Asia. So I deal with all the militaries in Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia and Singapore. And also all the uh, oil and gas related companies, the up, up, upshore, the onshore and the offshore. And uh, it's very engineering related. But it's not easy starting a business. But uh, with the help of God, all things are possible. As I said, I start from accountancy, 180, or switch to engineering. And my engineering, the highest, I do reverse engineering. Reverse engineering means an aeroplane turbine. I'm able to do a same turbine, but with a dip, but that can buy that. You know, if you copyright uh, one turbine, you can be sued. But when you do a reverse engineering, that means you are able to do away from the, uh, the copyrights or the, uh, what, what do you call that? So, so long getting old already. The pattern rights, you see or not? So when you're able to go, uh, uh, you do not violate the pattern rights, you can produce the same machine, then you can do a lot, a lot of money with that. You can bring it. So uh, for five power plants that I did in this, uh, Indonesia, I'm able to help them to do high efficiency performance monitoring as well as help them to sell spare parts and replacement of those uh, obsolete models. So this is one part of what I'm doing. So now I'm going to hand over to Koko. I don't want this. All right, I'll comply. <laughs> All right, uh, I want to talk about mental health. Because when you go into business, 
and you become in the workplace, you're going to be stressed. So how do you overcome stress? Okay, and manage stress and yet be successful. And also have your spiritual life balanced. Okay? All right. So how and when, what happens to our brain when we get stressed? There's two parts of the brain. All right. There, I'll draw the brain for you, okay? Let's say this is your brain. This is the front where your eyes are. Okay? That's your brain. There is a part of the brain that gives you hope and optimism. But there's a part of your brain that gives you stress and depression and fear. Okay? The part that gives you hope is here. It's called the anterior cingulate cortex. I'm writing it so that you can go and Google it later. I call it ACC. Okay? There's another part here called the amygdala. Amygdala. Now, for example, what happens is this. If your boss works you very hard, don't give you any help. You say, give me more help, give me more time. He says, no, you do it. He doesn't care. I've got no more money. You just work hard. After a while, your amygdala gets very active. And you become anxious. And then after a while, too long, you become depressed. The amygdala becomes very active and bigger. Okay? So this is fear and anxiety. Fear. Anxiety. But then the, the scientists, the researchers discovered this one. And how did they discover this one? There is a researcher, a medical researcher in Montreal University, Dr. Buroga. He looked at young people in love with each other. You know, boy, girl. And he wanted to know which part of the brain becomes very active when people are romantically in love. So now in functional MRI, they can see your brain as it fires and where it fires. Ha, ah, good. Thank you. All right. Yeah. They can see your brain when it fires, where it fires. So they chose some boy-girl thing, romantic love, and they put the girl in the machine. And they show the girl the picture of the boy they love. And immediately, this one comes alive, fires, okay? Now, I'm going to give you some statistics, okay? This is the ACC, right? So in romantic love, The ACC fires, one, and other part of the brain fires, two. Romantic love. Ah, this man, Dr. Burugat says, what about unconditional love? How to make experiment with unconditional love? So you know what he did? He chose care of people who care for other people who are sick, who are dying. And when you care for someone who's sick and dying, and really care for that person, but the person is sick, and he's dying, and maybe he's poor, he can never repay back. Okay, unconditional love. So he put the carer in the machine, and showed the carer a picture of the one they're caring for. And guess what? People who really love and care for people, what part of the brain fires? This is unconditional love. ACC fires. And six other places of the brain fires. When your brain lights up like a Christmas tree, it's good news. <laughs> because people who've got dementia, their brains are very quiet. You can't get them to light up. 
But when your brain lights up seven places like a Christmas tree, it's your reward. When you care for another, when you love another really, unconditionally, you have your reward immediately. Now, you may say, this is just for a little while. Oh, Christmas tree, Christmas is over, it's gone. Not true. The, the scientists discover something. They say, whatever you use in your brain becomes bigger and stronger and stronger. Okay? Now, this is how it works. If I learn French, I go and learn French. The neural network to recognize language, oh, I learned your language. It starts with doing very thin, the neural network, very thin. But if I learn, learn the language, I speak the language, I write the language, I mix with you all, that language neuron becomes from thin to thick. And thicker and thicker. But if I stop, it goes from thick back to thin. So the scientists say, what fires together, fire together, right? Fire together, fire together, become thick. What fires together, wires together. Becomes thicker and stronger and permanent. You must keep doing it. If you don't, it goes from thin back to thin. Sorry, thick back to thin. Okay? So what fires together, wires together. So if you practice unconditional love, you have this wiring together, thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker, and becomes part of your life. Now, you may say, oh, what other things can wire and fire together between the ACC and the amygdala? The scientists discover, <laughs> the scientists discover that there is something uh, called the hope and optimism circuit. And it's a connection between these two. When you are fearful and anxious and maybe even depressed, all right, this part goes bigger and bigger and bigger. The police in New York, the army in the Middle East, their amygdala is swollen. Bigger. You know what happens when your amygdala is swollen? You can't sleep at night. You wake up and have cold sweat, you have bad dreams, you have nightmares. This is what happens to the military. Ah, but if you can fire this anterior cingulate cortex ACC, there is a hope and optimism circuit, like wire. If you fire this, this one quietens down and your stress and depression goes away. So the scientist calls this a hope and optimism circuit. Now, can you grow your hope and optimism circuit? Can you grow it? Can you, what, fires together, wires together? Yeah. Okay, so if you have romantic love, okay, you have an unconditional love, what fires together, wires together, when it fires and fires and fires, it becomes thicker and thicker and thicker. Your character change. You have hope and optimism. Even when things are not so good, you have hope and optimism. So, in your business career, in your home life, as a student, you want a very strong hope and optimism circuit. This is called the hope and optimism circuit. You Google this, you will find a lot of information on the ACC and the hope and optimism circuit and the amygdala. Now, you're going to grow up. You're going to face challenges. You're going to face bad boxes, bosses. <laughs> you may face good bosses. But you may face health issues. You may face financial issues. They can all affect you. But you must develop a big ACC 
and a strong hope and optimism circuit. Now, the hope and optimism circuit is like hard wire. You put on that switch, the light comes on. Okay. Now, what's important now? You all have it. You all have ACC. You all have amygdala. You all have a hope and optimism circuit. Now you've got to build that circuit up. How to build the circuit? I tell you a story. My mother. She was with me for many years, and she's got three sons. I'm the eldest son. She's got two other sons. We all love her very much. But in Singapore, maybe even here, the TV channel called Channel 8 in Singapore. You turn it on every night for one hour, maybe more. They show you movies that are designed to make you anxious, to make you angry, to you, you see things that, that betray each other. For example, the story is like this. That's a rich man, very rich man. He's got a faithful wife, but he's also got two mistresses. And the mistresses want to plot to get his money and they're thinking of killing him. Now, when you watch this kind of movie night after night, what fires? This one or this one? <laughs> the amygdala fires. Because the movies are designed to make you feel that way. Okay. So, my mother, she should have no trouble because we will look after her. And she has money from my father. My father is dead. Was dead at that time. And sometimes in the day when things are very nice, you know, there's no problems, and the day is just going smoothly, she'll say to me, Kokto, that's my name, huh? Kokto, I don't feel at ease today. She's not at peace. Why? Because she's watching all those movies, and this time has become very big. <laughs> now, you want this one to become very big. Yeah? Fall in love. True love. <laughs> Romantic love. <laughs> Practice unconditional love. Care about other people. Yeah? And becomes bigger, this one becomes bigger, and this one becomes under control. I want to tell you a story. It's about Dr. Zander. Now, Dr. Zander is not a medical doctor. Doctor of music. He is the conductor of the Boston Philharmonic. And every year, from all over the world, maybe from Philippines, they will send their best musician to, to Boston. And Dr. Zander gets about 60, 70, 80 musicians from all over the world, even vocalists. And he, at first, he would assess them. If there were 80, there will be a number one, they will be a number last. And he would assess them and then what happens is he noticed that the musicians, when they practice for the assessment, they are all fearful. They don't want to be last. So Dr. Zander said, they were practicing on their own as if they were in prison, not in contact with their, their friends and fellow musicians. And that's not good for music because music is to connect up like an orchestra, to harmonize, to care about each other's music and, 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 and uh, uh, rhythm and, and feelings and expression, right? This is no good. This is no good. So Dr. Zander for that year, he said, musicians, no more assessment. All of you will get an unconditional A. Everyone of them. But after six months of unconditional aid, all you got to do is tell me what did, un what did the unconditional aid do for your life? So after six months, she gets a stack of letters from the musicians. And this is what the musician said. Dear Dr. Zander, I don't feel like an A, but you insist I'm an A. So, when I practice my music now, I practice with my friends in a group. 
I can hear and feel the music, more of the music. I learn new techniques with my friends. And because the fear of being last is gone, the ACC is relieved to fire. And this becomes stronger. And they can feel the music. And that year, the Boston Philharmonic was the very best. Why? They got all of them an unconditional A. Now, students, we all want to excel, right? But life is hard. Right? And we all struggle with the tension of life. Right? And I want to take, I'm going to show you what tension of life we all go through. Okay. I will tell you about myself. <laughs> when I grew up, when I was about, before I was 10, my mother loved me. And she said, Doctor, you look at the man who's sweeping the road. And this is, this is, I'm talking about 65 years ago. He's sweeping the road. There's no machine. He's sweeping the road with a big bamboo broom. And he was an Indian man. The sun was hot. He was sweating. He's charcoal black. And I looked and my mother said, if you don't study hard, you'll be like that man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I believe her. So, I studied hard. I was a good student. I had A's. I had even double promotion. But, I was afraid of exams. I studied hard not to be last. I studied hard because I was afraid of failure. So, when, even when I succeeded with A's and double promotion, I did not taste the success. I was worried about the next exam. And when the next exam came, I studied hard, I got A's, but I didn't taste it. I was afraid of the next exam. When you're pursued by fear, you can't taste life. When you're pursued by fear of being last in music with Zanda, you can't feel the music. You can't feel the life of the music. So how do we get rid of this fear? How do we shut this down? We say practice, 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 right? I grow your what fires together, wires together. How, right? Okay, I'm going to put down my fear, okay? This is common, which means everybody has it, emotional, how you feel, fears. My fear was failure. And I wanted success. And even when I got success, I couldn't taste it. Because I was fearing failure. I want to take down some of your common emotional fears. So that we'll show you how to deal with common emotional fears. How to get rid of it. What are your common emotional fears? You don't, have to, you don't have to tell me your uncommon special fears. Tell me your common emotional fears. Okay? What? Getting, getting your parents mad. Oh, okay. So it's a relationship thing, right? She's afraid of getting her parents mad. So, what is her fear? She is fearful. Right. You're fearful of being rejected. Rejection. You want acceptance. Now, young people, especially young people, oh, you want acceptance. If there's the latest, you want the latest and the greatest in fashion, you want it. Who is the greatest? <laughs> Sportsman, sportswoman, oh, you want it, right? And if your 
you are the younger child, you don't want your elder brother's clothes, you want the latest. Because you want acceptance, you fear rejection. Any more, any more. Re they're all related. If you want, if you fear rejection, you also fear shame. Right? If you want to be fashionable, you don't want to be unfashionable. Not like everybody else. You don't want to be shame. And shame, also, also acceptance or love, you know? Yeah? Any more? Come on. Okay. Yes. Sorry, what is that? What is that? Disappoint others. Oh. Disappoint others. Yeah. Okay. Um, how would I, general word, disappoint others? Um, to, well, it's like also rejection, right? If you disappoint others, people say, uh, right? so they're all related, okay? One is, I, I do and ask, I do this in Australia, and you know what? Australian uh, men, um, uh, uh, family, the, the, the older people, sorry, the young, the fathers and mothers don't live with their children when they grow up, right? And most of it, what is the problem? Loneliness. Yeah? And the opposite of loneliness is to have family or friends. And Australians, not only that, they fear loneliness, they also fear being, dying alone. And in fearing that, they want family, they want friends, they want communal life, life in a community. And I'm sure you have a lot more of that life in a community, right? Filipinos are very friendly. Yeah? They help each other. So you may have less of that. Okay, any more? What did, in Xander, what happened? You don't want to be last. <laughs> you want to be first. Right? Um, any more? Speak up, I'm a bit deaf. Loss. L O S S. Like L O S T. Loss, right? Loss. Loss can be like, or maybe even L O S S, like. Business failure, yeah, and you want, you want, well, you want success. You, if you lost, you want gain, right? Okay, I think you all get the idea now. Our our tension of life. Maybe I put one more, which is very common. Poverty, poor, poverty. You're poor. You want wealth, money, common, right? Okay. And business people want to make profits. Yeah. Okay, how to overcome this? And why is this a tension? I tell you why it's a tension. Because it is very common. If I'm poor, I want to be wealthy. If I make my first million, I would say, because I'm fearful of Poverty, being poor. I want two million. And when I'm two million, I'm mixed with very uh, wealthy people. I fear rejection. If I, oh, they've got 10 million, I've got two million. They've got a Ferrari, I've got a, 
I don't know. <laughs> Kia or something. I don't know. Okay. Ah, I want to be there. So this is a stress. Stress for everybody. Okay? I mean, all these are stresses. If how to overcome this stress? Now, you will face a suggestion of how to overcome the stress in the world. They will offer you something called meditation. Have you heard of this? Uh, you meditate. You think of nothing. And you know, what they're saying is, when you fear poverty and you want wealth, you, you don't want to be shamed, you want acceptance and love. When you love, you're not sure whether that person really loves you and you may break up or become shamed again. So, how do you overcome this? When I was a young man, 18 years old, I went to London. And my father said, oh, this is amazing stuff. I was fearful of failure, right, all my life. And 18, my father said, he, he is not a rich man, but he saved enough money. He said, Doctor, um, I've saved enough money. And why don't you go to London and study accounting and come back successful? When I heard come back successful, instead of like, wow, you know, my father loves me. I'm going to come back successful. I was afraid that I would fail and come back a failure. Oh. Not a good mental frame of mind. Mental health, very bad. Right? <laughs> okay. So, I went to London. And in London, there was the Beatles. I don't know, you're so young, you never heard of the Beatles. But anyway, they were a very famous band. And they were meditating with Maharishi Guru. And um, the, uh, Ravi Shankar was there playing sitar music from India. So the West, the UK was bringing in the East, you know. And the hippies were there. They were meditating. They were the flower people. The famous film stars were all meditating. And in my country, I was a Buddhist, a Taoist. And in my country, in the caves, in the gardens, people were meditating, the Buddhists, the Hindus, the priests. But I wasn't interested. They were like, oh, they were uh, uh, recluses. They were on their own. They were not friendly. They, they were uh, uh, not my type. But in, in the UK, the film stars were doing it. Beatles were doing it. I said, wow, this must be good. But it's from the East. <laughs> Repackaged to be good. So I picked up a book and learned meditation. And this is what it taught me. Now, meditation now is being taught, I'm not saying it's good, I'm telling you it's bad, by very famous people like uh, Robbins. Uh, Robbins, what? Uh, he meditates, he will say, when you meditate, you're recharging. You're thinking of nothing. You are escaping from the tension. When you have recharged, face the world. Go out and sell some more. That's how they use it. Okay? They're exploiting a, a process of meditation where you can go away from this and find your peace. And then go out and face the world again. So it's a, an exploitation. It's not a true way of getting out of it. But I want to offer you something. Now, you're in a Christian Seventh-day Adventist school. And I want to show you something. If you look at Jesus Christ on the cross, it's not good to put on a black cross, but this pen works better. Not very good either. Anyway, if you look at the cross, What the Bible says is this. Jesus, by the cross, took shame. They crucified him naked to make it more shameful. But because he loved us more, more than that, he took the shame that we may feel accepted. 
So he took the shame that we may know that he loves us. How strong is that love? How shameful was that shame? The more shameful it was, the more you know he loves you. So at the cross, there is an exchange. He took shame and gave you for certain the love of God. He took rejection by his people. The ones he came for. His own people, Israel. He took their rejection. He, by taking on our sins, he took the rejection of God the Father. That we may know that we have his acceptance. Unconditional love. Unconditional love. He was alone that we may be brought into his family to be called his friend even to be called sons of God he took our death from sin that we may have life his life eternal the Bible says this if you choose to be last in Christ you will be first in Him. Only in Him. These are opposites. These are paradoxes. But in Christ, opposites can be resolved as one. You may be lost, but you will gain life in Him. If you feel you're poor, you will feel abundant in Him. Now, what does that do when you see that what, is, what we have in perception of how we think about what we have and what we want is given at the cross in exchange. He took what we deserve, that we may have what He deserves. At the cross, it's an exchange. It's a swap. So, believing in Christ, believing in the word of the cross, that you have been given these things as a gift. When you receive it as a gift, you do not, from God, you do not fear that it can be lost. You do not fear that it can go away. And because it is unconditional love, and you meditate, on his unconditional love, your what fires together, wires together, and your hope and optimism circuit becomes very strong. And I want to say this to you. I don't know if you are, I don't know what happens here, but for example, if some of you may be going to church, coming to church and uh, uh, working as a, uh, as, a, as a church together. If your pastor says to you, hey, young people, let's go and visit the old folks' home. And you say, oh, we did that last week. Must we do it again? The pastor says, okay, come on, come on, one more time. And you say, okay, okay, we'll go one more time. But you're really unwilling. When you do, but even when you do it, what do you think will fire? This one or this one? This one. Yeah, I want to do it, I have to do it. You know, this is because it's not genuine, it's not unconditional love. So what I'm trying to say to you, you have, the Bible tells you these things. Perfect love casts out fear. What does that mean? Perfect love is found here. Unconditional love. When this becomes very strong, perfect love casts out fear. Huh. The Bible says and tells us about the hope and optimism circuit just like that. Perfect love casts out fear. You're designed that way. It depends what you strengthen in your brain. 
Now the brain is what they call like jelly. You can develop it. Now I'll tell you one more story. I think they, I don't know, but I'll tell you this story. When in a war, when you're in a soldier and you've got your weapons and you're in the foxhole and the enemy is just across the, the, the field, in a war, when the shells are going and the grenades are going, the missiles are growing, wow, what do you think will fire? Fear. And when you fight as a soldier in a war, if you're fearful, you're more than likely as a group of soldiers to lose the battle. Right? But if you fought with love for your country, and the love calms the fear, you fight with judgment. And, and oh, by the way, ACC is also responsible for your will, your determination. You're more likely to win the war. Now, we are involved in a war of life. You need this one firing, you need a strong circuitry, you need to put aside your fears. Now, the US Army, they want to teach, if possible, their soldiers to fight the war with their anterior cingulate cortex, to fight for the country they love, to fight with the willpower and not be fearful. They're trying that. But I want to tell you about Jesus Christ. He was also involved with a war. It started in heaven. And on earth, there is a war. A spiritual war that involves us all. A bigger war. That's called the Great Controversy. Okay? Now, what did they do to Jesus when they captured him? They insulted him. They spat at him. They traumatized him. They whipped him. To stir up which part of his brain? This one or this one? They, stir, they wanted to stir him up. His amygdala, his anger, his fear. I don't need you people. I'm going back to heaven. They wanted to stir him up. But in his life, what's happening? He's developed a very strong and big anterior cingulate cortex. He had a thick hope and optimism circuit and the and the ACC and the optimism circuit. He had optimism, optimism for us all. He had hope for us all. And that hope and optimism circuit kept his amygdala under control. So that when, even when they crucified him and lifted up him up, he said, forgive them for they know not what they do. Would you like to have that kind of a brain circuitry? Read the Bible. Meditate on the words. Let it become your strength when you go out as business people. Let it be your strength in your family and amongst your friends here. Let's put outside all our fears in relation to each other and harmonize as one. There will be a strength of unity in God. Any questions? Now that David is here and you need to resume. All right, let's end with a short prayer. Right. Our Father who is in heaven, we're so glad to learn how you have designed us, how you've made us, wired us, that we may have hope and optimism as you have hope and optimism in us. Let us avail ourselves of your design of who we are, our brain, and our community. Let us harmonize, Lord, in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Um, the person who talked earlier, his name is yes. Yip Kok Toh, and he is a retired chartered accountant. He is yes, he held finance directorships of regional multinationals located in Singapore. He speaks internationally, contrasting Eastern and Biblical meditation. He has 30 years of studying Bible prophecy, and he is into Bible study, health, and gardening. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing valuable insights to our students this afternoon. And uh, welcome everyone, especially to our students from the College of Business and the rest of our AUB, to, AUB students and uh, our friends, alumni or who are here with us this afternoon. So we welcome you to this program. And before we, this program is a pretty straightforward program. We don't have much going on, but we just want to learn from Sir David Tan, who is our resource speaker for this afternoon. But before we go to that, I would like to um, give the floor first to, to Miss uh, Crichelle Macapobre to give us a special number.
so much. Chriselle is a student from the Office Administration Department. So, yeah, without any further ado, our speaker is very excited to be with us today to share his very, very meaningful experiences. He's very credible in, especially in the topic that we have today. He um, had 40 years in management and marketing experiences. He has investments in shares, businesses, and properties, and most of all, he is very active in charitable and church activities and organizations. So, ladies and gentlemen, let us now give the time to Mr. David Jackson Tan. Thank you. Good afternoon. Sorry, I, I'm a bit late because my, I need to rest. My health is not good. Um, my topic is how the Chinese starts a business without capital. Can I ask, who knows? From the student, how many of you are business students? Raise your hand. Business student, raise your hand. Hi, hi. Hi, hi. Proud to be a business student. Huh? What about accounting? Accounting, okay. What else is here? Who else is here? Marketing. Huh? Nine. IT. How many of you are IT? One, okay. Congratulations. How many of you have been in business? Have done some business? Raise your hand. Ah, not bad. How many of you want to go into business after you graduate? How many of you want to go into business after five years you graduate? Working for people first. Okay. So, tell me. This is very interactive, huh? so you don't talk, I don't talk. Understand? Because you are all supposed to be doing business. Interested to do business, you need to talk. So, can someone tell me how the Chinese start a business without capital in the Philippines? Who is the richest man in the Philippines? Henry C. Henry C. What does he do? Huh? Retail. How did he start? Shoe, ma. 
he bring in shoes and sell. Were you wearing shoes at that time? Filipinos, were you wearing shoes when he started business? Yes or no? Or you barefoot? Remember your grand grand grandfather? Okay. Did they wear shoes? Yes? Not many. Okay. So who else is uh, Chinese in Philippines that has made it? Go Kong Wei. What does he do? How did he start? Who is Go Kong Hui? Digital. What else? Go Kong Hui. Google, Google. Cebu Pacific. Century Pacific. Okay, very good. How did he start? Huh? Selling peanuts. Selling peanuts. How many of you have you have sold peanuts before? In on campus? None. How can you be businessman and woman? Mm. Ah. All these people are Chinese living in different parts of Asia. You recognize any of them? The top one. Li Ka Xing, what does he do? How did he start it? Anybody? Ladies like those. What does it? What does lady like? Flowers. But he does plastic flowers. Okay. <laughs> That's how he got started. And he's the richest man in Asia. Second one. Take notes, huh? take notes. Huh? Please take notes. Otherwise, one in year, one year, one year out. Second one. Start with Robert. Robert who? Nobody. We are business students. All this you don't Google. <laughs> Someone tell me. I won't. I won't tell you. Who is Robert Kwok? Sugar King. What else you know him by? Oh, <laughs> students, eh? <laughs> Shangri-La Hotel. How many of you know Shangri-La Hotel? Only few. Ah. The rest don't know. What is Shangri-La Hotel? The first five-star hotel in Asia. Operated by Asian. Shangri-La. Okay, let's go on. It's a fact. It's not. It's scientifically proven, mathematically correct. Eight out of ten businesses fail within the first five years. How many of you still want to do business? Oh, there's still very few, few of you hardcore. The rest of you, a bit wavering, really. Not sure. It's a fact, huh? How many? Eight out of ten fail within the first five years. Only two survive. And when the two that survive, what happens? They went through a lot of heartache, right? And when the egg fail, do they have a good time? Yeah, because two competition, previously ten competition. And yet, why millions still want to start business? You go and study business. I didn't. I, I, what do you call that? Gong Gong. Ah. You know what's Gong Gong? Stupid, stupid, go into business. You know, stupid, stupid. Up there, nothing. <laughs> go into business. Many of you say, I want to do business because I want to make money. How many like that? You must vote, huh? you must raise your hand. Huh? How many say, I want to do business because I see Mr. David Tan, very rich. Okay. <laughs> okay. Some, no choice. Like me, huh? no choice. Some are uh, circumstances. Cannot come to university like you. Privilege. Are you privileged? 
No, I don't get to study university. Start, how do I start business? If I don't go to university. 18. Uh, when I go and gong gong, uh, knock knock here, knock knock there, you are still enjoying your life in AUP. Enjoy or not? AUP? Enjoy life or not? Compare with you working outside. Enjoy. Some are family background. I come from a business family. So uh, there's a wish, right? Your parents wish for you to uh, go into business if you're a business family. Very few actually desire to do so. Now, copy that down. Can you read out, read out loud? If, again, again, if, true, why? Someone tell me, why? If you chase after money, money will fly away, don't come to you one. Why? Huh? Inflation. Hmm. <laughs> Expectation. Hmm. Okay, some more? Huh? Irresponsible. Hmm. Better. Some more? The accountant is quite good. Hey, no, IT. Uh. That's IT, right? <laughs> what else? Why the money will go away if you chase after money? No passion. Who said that? Oh, good you. Are you in business? Ah. Accounting. Not quite business yet. Okay. What else? Passion. What else? Your concentration, if you chase after money, your concentration is on money. Business is not about money. What is business about? Passion, yes, but business is about serving. Write that down. Business is about serving. If you don't concentrate on serving, you concentrate, how do I make money from you? What's your name? None. Dot. 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 None. Dot. <laughs> okay. How do you spell it? K A T. K A T. Cat. Okay. Catherine, as in Catherine. Okay. So, if I want to make money from Catherine and I don't concentrate on finding out what she wants, what do you think she wants? Anyone? You stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Huh? Stand up, turn around. What do you think she wants? Boyfriend. Boyfriend. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> uh, that's a good thing. So how do you make money out of getting, him, getting her boyfriend? <laughs> Besides, skip, skip sending up. Besides having, finding a boyfriend, you have boyfriend or not? Cat. Ah, he from China, you know. Looking for a girlfriend. <laughs> Long Fei, stand up. <laughs> Long Fei, my part, my worthy partner in, Singapore, in China. Tall, handsome, ah, looking for, this time, first time to come to the Philippines. Ah, go chase after him, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, what did I say? Why, if you chase after money, money will fly away. What is it? What is the number one reason? Two, passion. You lack the passion. And second, you are not serving. You are only interested in cat's money. But why the Chinese could make it? What are some of the reasons? Name, name for me. Why you think the Chinese will make it? They come to sing, they come to fill it. Oh, shh. <laughs> she's, a, she's a very successful businesswoman. Cecilia, stand up. Ah, very successful. For a lady to do an engineering company, easy or not? No, not easy at all. 
Even I kow tao, you know kow tao, take off my head for, to her. She should teach this lesson. That's why I keep her quiet. Otherwise, you guys have no chance to think. Why do you think Chinese could make it? Henry C come with nothing, right? Go Kong Wei come with nothing. Yet today, he, they are richer than many, many, many hundreds of millions of uh, Filipinos. How? In one generation. Name me one. Just say, comes to your mind. Why do you think they could, they could make billions? Huh? Determination. Okay. Huh? Louder, louder, huh? You are all business students, yeah? Must learn how to speak loud. What? Huh? Risk taker. Mm, okay, okay. Opportunist. Okay. Huh? Patience. Okay. Perseverance. Good point. What else? Huh? What? Buy and sell. They know what to do. Buy and sell. What else? Huh? Commitment. What else? Huh? You didn't. I'm trying to look for something that you didn't see. Huh? That means you guys all will fail in business. Hard working. You, you think you come to university, I study, I don't need to work so hard, right? When I do business, no such thing. Hard work is definitely. What else? What, another one very, very important. Huh? Huh? No lah. You see the Chinese, Chinese business, businessmen and women in the shop? They have been dead 20 years, 40 years, still the same. What innovation? No. Oh, oh, honestly. <laughs> oh, the Filipino has a saying, Chinese businessmen cannot trust. Huh? Okay. <laughs> uh, what else? Consistent, persistent, consistent. Yes? They are? Patient. Vision. No, nah, they didn't start. Some of them start because they have no choice. Huh? Cannot get into school. Uh, no, not true. What else? Connection. Partly true, yeah. Okay, what else? I'm still looking for something. They service people around, right? People person. Okay, what else? Huh? They see the demand. Okay. I'm still looking for something. Oh, yo. Huh? That you don't like to say out about. <laughs> huh? They have network already say, yeah. Huh? They don't lend money. They don't lend money. Not like the ten not like the ten ten what uh? Not the not like the Indian. Ten four. Ten four is it? Huh? Five six. Ah, five six. Not like the five six. <laughs> uh, they got money, they can make more than five six. <laughs> what else? Huh? Work ethic, they work hard. Huh? Okay. What else? I'm looking for something that you guys. Huh? Huh? Talent. No, they don't need many. I don't need to go to university to, to do business. That's what I'm teaching you. Huh? huh? They are persuasive, okay? Hi, ya, ya. How can. When I go to Bakio, uh, they immediately come out the answer, correct. What is it? Huh? Poor? Huh? Can you see me at top? Okay, uh, to cut short, uh, the answer is they are Sinji. <laughs> what do you call that in, what do you call that in uh, Filipino? Huh? Burrito. No. <laughs> okay. You agree? Yes. Oh yo. They make they went, they make one peso, how much do they send? Zero. <laughs> ah, they want rice, one 
one piece of salted fish that they sell, and then they eat the rice with chili, with uh, soy sauce, uh, and then they go to work again. They are stingy. Thrifty is a nice word. Agree or not? Raise your hand. But no Filipinos are stingy. <laughs> Uh, that's why you don't get many who can succeed in business. You make, you make, you make 10 pesos, you spend how much? Or oh, your 10 much. Eh? <laughs> okay. Are they lucky? <laughs> who say yes? Barnabas. Barnabas. Jan. Are they lucky? Maybe, what is the definition of luck? Is luck, luck could be winning the lottery and jackpot, right? You say, oh, he win the jackpot, lottery, lucky, or being in the right place at the right time. Which one do you think is better answer? First one or second one? Second one, good for you, write that down. However, a great definition of luck is, read it out, luck. Can someone explain this? Stand up and explain. What is preparation meeting opportunity? Yes. What's your name, huh? Ah, Long Pei, you married or not? <laughs> Luck, luck has come your way if you are not married. <laughs> ah, stand in front so she, he can see you better. <clears throat> wow, so close there. Yeah. <laughs> Hello? I'd, I'd like to explain that preparation meets uh, opportunity is luck. Because when you are prepared on whatever you are going through or you're going to have an opportunity come to you, once preparation meets uh, uh, opportunity, you have luck. Because once you grab that opportunity, you are able to succeed, or at least have the quote unquote opportunity to be able to start off of somewhere. So even if you lose, or even if you don't get what you were hoping for, which is the expectations, we at least have the chance to grow from experiences. Thank you. That is What's your name? Such a long answer. Long way, you know, can't go king down. She spent two minutes there standing in front of you. <laughs> okay. Opportunity is preparation. Example, huh? Preparation meeting opportunity. Example. I have one million peso to invest among one of you. You have any proposal? You do. You are a teacher, cannot student. <laughs> Anybody got an opportunity? Okay, okay, come, 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 come. What? What is your proposal? All of you have a proposal. Get ready, ah. Huh? So you have one million. That is uh, peso. Yeah, one million peso. And uh, for example, huh? for example, at this moment, so we're going to give our proposal to you if we have our. We are businessmen. Mm. Uh, you have a proposal in mind. Yes, I have what a proposal is the in mind. For example, we're going to uh, ask you that that one million peso would be given for the business that we have. Which is? Which is just like Henry C. or Goffin Way that we have uh, to sell peanut or, for example, a uh, shoe production. Or maybe we can go with investment in school or okay. a scholarship of students. Thank you. Please see that. Do you think I will invest? No. Yeah, no. Why? It's not focused. Uh, you don't have a concrete idea. Anybody else? 
Anybody else? Got a proposal? If I have one million to invest in one of you. Yes. Wow, again you are. Uh. Okay. Come, 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 come. <laughs> What's your name, huh? Sorry? Alison. Alison in Wonderland. Yeah. Okay. Alison in Wonderland. So for me, I have started a small business back when I was uh, 13, tw uh, 12 to 13, uh, which is the chili paste business. Huh? So I would like what? To, uh, chili paste. Chili business. paste. Oh, chili paste and chili so oil. Yes. <laughs> so um, I'd like to propose uh, an idea whereas this paste, even if it's uh, small in this very small jar, uh, imaginary jar. <laughs> uh, in this small jar, there's a huge amount of paste and a, uh, a little amount of oil. So uh, for this to be a success, you would have to reheat it in a bottle of oil. So when you put it in a bottle of oil, you have more chili oil. So with that, you will not only produce in this small jar, which is only say 45 pesos, uh, a huger bottle of chili oil that you can sell for at least 200. So you have supplier of chili oil for chili oil producer? Yes. Seller. Okay. Sounds so, interesting. Uh, that would be my preparation since I had experience and uh, I have my product. That would be my, pre uh, my preparation and right now would be the opportunity that I will stand before you and say my idea. So that Thank is you. my... Uh, Any one more? Yes. <clears throat> You have one million, right? Mm. Okay, um, so I am an agent. You give me your one million, and in short time, I'll give you five million. How? Oh. Um, for this one million, we will make a building. Make a building? Yeah, and then we will let other people rent. Then how does the five million, how long does it take? Um, we can say if um, the rent is Let's say per room is 20,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in time, I, I cannot give you 5 million today. Of course. Okay, so it will <laughs> grow, it will grow. But the thing is, you give me 1 million, you don't need to work. Mm. And in time, I you will have I need to worry, money. right? At least there's work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. All right. She is, are you doing it already? Uh, secret plan because someone else might steal it. Oh, so many people! Huh? <laughs> uh, it's important to test your plan, huh? Like chili oil, yeah. Huh? Test, test the plan. Mm. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Third one. So we have uh, chili oil. We have uh, buy a property. Apply a land, is it? Build up and then rent it out. Okay. One million. Okay. Third one? Huh? Third one? Nobody. Okay, behind. Wow, all ladies, are, all the boys, what happened? Huh? <laughs> <coughs> so, sir, I have a plan. Um, um, the plan would be to do the livestock. So livestock. In, yes. I'm a so vegetarian. In, <laughs> <laughs> so in, in Mindanao, my father has contacts with livestock. He planned to buy um, a cow, a uh, beef. I'm sorry. Cow. Oh. <laughs> I'm a vegetarian. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> so sir, the plan would be that one cow would be around fifty thousand. And then you will need at least eight months, four months for the cow to mature because we will be buying the cow around six months old. And then it will, re it will be ready around four months. And they have the experience to fertilize the cow. So the cow will be yielding Ooh. two child or one <laughs> child. <laughs> and then after another six months, the child will be ready to also fertilize or to yield another member. I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> eh. <laughs> and then the older generation can be put out for uh, beef production. Good idea. 
but I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> okay. So, luck is preparation, meeting, opportunity. Okay, there are three proposals. Cow, property, and she went away, chili oil. Which one do you think I will invest? Out of the three? Huh? Oh, let's show a hand, huh? you must vote one. Huh? What do you think I will invest in the cow business? The property or the chili oil? Hold on, hold on. Cow, raise your hand. Nobody think that I will invest in cow. Why? Because I say I'm a vegetarian. You must have a principle when you do business, yeah? Second, who says uh, property? Property, okay. Third one, chili oil. Oh, very few, huh? So property is, uh, you think, okay. Why do you think I will invest in property? Huh? One million not enough. Who say that? Yes. One million enough or not enough? Not enough. So, second one gone. Left what? Chili oil. <laughs> okay. So you understand? Preparation, meeting, opportunity. If you are prepared, you can straight away come up and say, Mr. Tan, I have this proposal. Would you like to invest? But you, most of you are not ready. Correct? Yeah, so lucky. You are not lucky. Okay. Now, but for Christians, take down this, huh? the best definition is found in Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Verse 26. Can we all read out loud? For. Loud, loud, loud. Again. For. Which is. Together, which is. Together what? Money. And so here there are two groups of people. One is a typical businessman or businesswoman. He says to but to a sinner, he gives trivial, hard work, tough life. Right? Business eight out of ten fail. Work very hard, no sleep, still fail. Okay. Hardship and struggle together to make money, to make profit. After he gather, he make profit, he will heap it up, put in the bank account. Wow, every day I earn 100,000 peso, tomorrow 200,000 peso, and so on. So happy or not? Are they happy? God gives the sinners, these three gifts. Happy or not? Happy or not? Happy. Happy. Say it loud. Happy. Yeah. The sinners are very happy. I got a business. The business make money. And I can keep it up. But can they spend it? You ask a, a, a shop, Chinese shop, huh? Got Chinese shop nearby or not? Or oh, sorry, sorry, so uh, you you tell us, hey, how come I see you open 365 days? Hard work or not? Hard work or not? 365 every day is open. Hard work? Difficult. You are all lazy. You go Sabbath. Not only Sabbath, Sunday also you don't you don't you lazy around, right? They work seven days a week, so and they make the money, can they spend it? No. You ask them, hey, how come you don't go holiday, you're so rich? You don't come to AUB, huh? Okay. <laughs> my Singapore friends, stand up. Oh, my Singapore friends. See? 
when they are old, then they start traveling. <laughs> See, all white hair. Uh, except this guy, uh, looking for a husband, not looking for, for a wife. Uh. <laughs> okay. So, many don't enjoy their life. Because when they, you ask them, why you don't travel? What is the answer? What is the answer? Too busy. Every, every, every money is time. Time is money, right? If I travel, who is going to take care of the shop? Uh, I lose money, lose income. Uh, so they rather make the money and happy, happy to make the money. And who spend? You all spend the money of your parents. <laughs> yeah. So, but this promise has two parts, huh? those who are good in God's sight. Are you good in God's sight? Raise your hand. Are you good in God's sight? All terrible sinners. <laughs> uh, at least uh, you are honest. <laughs> okay. How to be... No, 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 you know. How do you... How, what does the Bible say is about to be, to be good? In God's eye, he says Abraham is good, right? Why? He's faithful, he's obedient, he worships God. Okay, so to be good in God's sight, God, you worship God, you seek his forgiveness, you ask him to help you. Uh, relationship, huh? So it's not that is it difficult to be good in God's sight? Difficult? Difficult? But we think very difficult. Huh? Must, must be holy, holy. Oh. No. As you study business in AUP, better learn how to be a good businessman in God's sight. Being good in God's sight means you're obedient, you follow His commandment, you seek His help, you have a relationship with him. You pray uh, when you are not in trouble and when you are in trouble. Okay. Yeah. So God says, if you are good in my sight, I will give you, what was that? Three things also. Wisdom, knowledge, and joy. What is the difference between wisdom and knowledge? What is the difference? College student, university student, AUP student. What is the difference between wisdom and knowledge? Sorry, I don't have my wallet here, otherwise give you a prize. Anybody? Again you. Wow. Don't pay. Come too. Okay. Come, come, come. Okay. <coughs> I see the difference in wisdom and knowledge uh, where wisdom comes from the Heavenly Father and knowledge comes from what we have experienced or what we have been studying throughout the years. So I see the difference in it because uh, knowledge comes from uh, all the things that we have gone through in our lives and what we can apply using it. But to be able to apply it, we need wisdom which is something that we can only get from the Lord and at the same time from uh, being able to read the Bible and worshiping Him. Good point. But do you think there is uh, earthly wisdom? Earthly wisdom? Wisdom on this earth? I think that you can find wisdom on earth from things that happen in your life that don't go so well. Being able to overcome those fears, those challenges, gives you the wisdom to be able to help others conquer the same challenges. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> What's your name again? Okay. What's your name? <laughs> okay. Write that down. Knowledge is facts. You can learn. You come to AUP to gain knowledge. Not wisdom, huh? gain knowledge. Because the teacher will teach you, I'm teaching you knowledge. 
Sometimes the knowledge is my experience, sometimes it's the book's experience, sometimes it's the teacher's experience. So that is, knowledge is knowledge is facts. Then wisdom is the ability to apply the facts well. So knowledge is facts. Wisdom is the ability to apply the knowledge well. Make sense? So, do you know some, be some people have knowledge but no wisdom? Have you seen some? Wow, bookworms. Okay. They have a lot of knowledge but don't know how to use it. Have you seen people who have wisdom but no knowledge? Who are they? Who are they? Who are they? The one in blue. With wisdom. Yes, you. Yes, you. <laughs> How? Stand up. Have you seen people has wisdom but no knowledge? Who are they? <laughs> Your brother. Explain, explain, explain. <laughs> louder, louder. Okay, so, but that experience is still knowledge from the world, okay. <clears throat> Anybody else? Have you seen someone, hmm? cannot? <laughs> Long Fei don't want you. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Have you seen someone with wisdom but no knowledge from there? The one looking at me, China. Yeah, you, 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 yes. <laughs> yes. Have you seen... Oh, okay. Have you seen someone who has wisdom but no knowledge? Gangsters, they have wisdom or not? No, oh, plenty of wisdom. Head of gangsters. But they just don't have the right knowledge. Huh? Mafia, mafia. Mm. Okay. Understand? The thing that God wants to give you who are good for your business is joy. Happy in doing what you are supposed to do. Huh? Joy. Okay. Now, from my experience, I have divided this drive to succeed. D R I V E. Something for you to take home with, study, understand. As a Christian businessman. Okay. D stands for Divine Blessings and Guidance. R stands for Resources Available. I stands for Ideas That Are Profitable. V stands for Virtuous Character. E stands for Energy to Persist and Succeed. Okay, let's go through one by one. Can anyone read this? Any Chinese here? I think can right. Nobody? Anybody? Student? Can anyone read this? Long Fei? Qin Yi Du? Ren Suan Pu Lu Tian Suan. Repeat after me. Ren Suan Pu Lu Tian Suan. Again. Loud, loud, loud. Ren Suan Pu Lu Tian Suan. This is the Chinese version of divine blessings and guidance. Ren means human being. The first word, huh? First word. Ren. Easy to write. Mustache. Okay. Ren Suan. Calculate. 
man's calculation, Fu Lu, Fu means no, not, not, Lu equivalent, Tian Suan, Tian means heaven, calculation. Man's calculation is not equivalent to heaven's calculation. That means if you calculate, I'm sure to make money, and God do not bless you. Do you think you will succeed? No matter how smart you are, you calculate, I sure make money. But God does not bless you. Do you think you will succeed? No, as a Christian businessman. But if you are not a Christian businessman, you may succeed. Because who is on your side? Oh, Satan is on your side. Satan owns the world or he owns the earth? Satan owns the world or owns the earth? Who says owns the world? Raise your hand. Who says own the earth? Satan. Aya, you tired already. You must choose one, huh? The Satan owns the earth or owns the world? Think, 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 think. Who says Satan owns the world? Raise your hand. Who says Satan owns the earth? The rest of you want to stand on middle ground and you die. In business, you cannot stand on middle ground. You have to every day make decisions. So I see all of you not good business person. Try to learn to make decisions, whether right or wrong. Understand? When you make a decision and it turns out wrong, then you know that it's wrong. If you stand on the stand on the half stand on the what what do you call that? Stand on the middle and you don't make decisions, you say they go wrong, you say, ah see, they go right, ah see, but you don't know. Yeah. So what what was it? Always make decisions, right or wrong. Then you gradually will make more right than wrong answers. So what was my question? Now must vote, ah. You don't vote, I don't, I, I stop this talk already. <laughs> Who thinks Satan owns the world? Raise your hand. Who thinks Satan owns the earth? Raise your hand. Wow, it's almost 50-50 there. There's still a lot of you don't know. Who created the earth? God. So who's the owner of the earth? Who put things on top? Like AUP, la, like uh, Makati, la, like all the city. La. Who puts it there? Businessman. Who controls the businessman? The sinners. <laughs> and who? What, what does God term sinner? Whose side are they on? Huh? You're on Satan's side if you are sinners. So you have no choice. You have to choose to be good or to be a sinner. You, there's no in between. You, know? you say, oh, I'm uh, I'm so so la. Huh? So so la. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm okay, okay. Cannot. So divine blessing. Let's read this again. Ecclesiastes 2.26 for So, if you are good in God's sight, God gives you the fourth one. If you have wisdom, you have knowledge, you have joy, is a uh, Time's up, right? What time is it now? Huh? Four. Are we supposed to go to six? Yeah, okay. Then I'm not uh, guilty. <laughs> okay.
All right. So, uh, God gives you wisdom, knowledge, and joy. With that, you can earn sinner's money. Correct? If you don't have wisdom, you don't have joy, you don't have knowledge, do you think you can make, make money from sinners? They are smarter than you. They are more shrewd than you. They are more stingy than you. <laughs> and they, they work seven days, you only work five days. Mm. Okay. So, you need blessings from heaven, right? Blessings from heaven. Okay. The difference between wisdom and knowledge? Knowledge is facts. Experience, wisdom. Okay? This is a good illustration. What is joy? Joy is passionate in what you do. Read this out loud. Love. Yes. Love what you do and do what you love. If you don't have this principle, you cannot last in business because it's tough. It's not easy to succeed in business. How many fail? Hey. So passion is the key that opens the door to joy and abundance. Ah, stand for resources available. Young people, what type of resources you need to start a business? Six M's. Write that down. Without material, market, manpower, money, machineries, and management, which is the three tops, three top uh, out of the six three most important, more important than the other three. Hold on, hold on. Decide first, write that down, then we vote. Is it material? Very important. Market? Very important. Manpower? Very important. Machinery? Very important. Or management? Very important. Okay, let's take a vote. Material. Who thinks material is very important? You have three votes, huh? Material. Hey, may I know, huh? Are you all sleeping or what? Must vote, huh? Who thinks material is important? I should see all hands go up, you know. You have no material, how do you sell? Correct. Who thinks market is important? More hands go up. Good. Who thinks manpower is important? Workers. Half of you. Who thinks money is important? Oh, quite a lot. I already say this, this course is about how to start business with no money. No money. And yet you raise your hand. <laughs> Who says machinery is important? That means equipment. Computer and all those things. Feel, yeah? Who thinks management is important? You are a good manager. Okay. Good. So I can see material, market, management. Write that down. Material, market, management are more important than the other three. Now, which one is the most important? And which one is the second? Out of the slide, three. Is it material, market, or management? Uh, raise your hand. Material. Nobody. Okay, market. Half. Ma management. Half. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> AUP, teaching wrong thing. <laughs> Let me ask again. You already know, huh? I tell you, your AUP is teaching you wrong thing. Okay. Who thinks material is important? Number one, important. Who thinks 
Market is very important. Okay. Who thinks management is very important? So it's still market. Hmm. I prefer. I think material is more important than market. Why? Huh? Any product. You must have material first before you can do market. You have market but no material. Can you can you sell anything? Huh? If you have listen uh, if you have market, if you have material, can you find market? If you have market and you don't have material, cannot. Cannot, especially when you have no money. Okay? Let me repeat, huh? very important. Many of you think you need money before you can start business. Today you are learning something from me. Okay? You need material more than market. Example, shoe mark. Who is it? Henry C. He comes to Ch from China. He brings with him shoes. Is there a market for shoes 80 years ago? Huh? Have or not? No, you still barefoot. Correct. Go some barefoot, right? So there's no market. But he has shoes. So he can sell shoes. To people who has bad food. If he comes from China with nothing to sell, but there's a market of that time could be 30, 40 million people. Can he sell anything? Yes or no? No. So today, if you want to step into Singapore, is Singapore expensive? Very expensive. Number one most expensive country in the world. So, you want to travel to holiday in uh, Singapore or not? No. Uh, yeah, all these business students. No, no imagination. You must bring products there to sell. Right? Products and service to sell. Then your... Your airfare, you stay in Shangri-La, no problem. How much is Shangri-La one night? Six hundred times forty. Two thousand four hundred. One night. You want to stay in Raffles Hotel is six thousand a night. Ah, you know the famous ship? Three towers and the ship, what is that called? What is that called? What is that called? Ah, Marina Bay Sands is a casino. How much money you need to go there? If you want to stay there one week and you don't fall into temptation of gambling. <laughs> 600 a night. Oh, so how many of you want to go to Singapore? Only one. Okay, can't me. Oh, only one. The rest of you study business, don't want to go. Do you understand? Do you understand yourself? That means you're not fit to be a businessman, businesswoman. You need to have that passion. You need to have the knowledge. You need to have the wisdom. You need to bring along Roxana. He brought how many kilos? Eh? 60 kilos of music book to Philippines to sell. Can you show?
No? I give Roxana one minute to promote to you. <laughs> if you can sell her books, how, how much commission is she giving? 30%. How much is your books? One set? 4,000, is it? 4,000 peso. You sell one set? 30%. How much is that? 1,200. Mm, okay. Give you one minute to promote to business students. That's your market. <laughs> uh. Yes, if you want to be my agent, you can sell these books. This is um, entitled Remember Your Creator. They are piano lesson books that are for beginners and they can go all the way to the higher grades. Since there are seven days in a week and we are Seventh-day Adventists, the seventh book is special, just like the Sabbath is special. It's also for strings. So you have ensemble, piano and violin. And so you have, for each book is uh, with Christian songs. Every book entirely of Christian songs from book one is the easiest and it goes all the way to the difficult one, book six, and then this is book seven. All right, all the books are behind with my website there and my contact number, oh. email, all that. Okay, so if you're interested in helping me to sell, come look for me. You can get my phone number. I will talk Sana to you. Sana composed this book. Oh, yeah. This After teaching for how long? I teach piano for 40 years. 40 Do years. She has a way of... Uh, uh, she wrote this to help students, young people, to learn how to play piano, right? Yeah. These uh, songs... Easily. Are all Christian songs. Like, the first song here is God is so good. Easy song for playing. And it progresses who, all the way to difficult... Like, who wants to try to be yeah. her agent? Thank you, Rosanna. Yeah. Huh? Word of God. Yeah, you I want? Think, okay. When I first received this book from her, it doesn't strike in my mind because my grandchildren also play piano. But because she's the first author who's able to write, you know, the songs from the point of the gospel of God. Is it? You're the first lady here. Yeah? First author that uses Christian songs to teach piano in a progressive manner. Um, How long does it take to play piano professionally, pro proficiently with your books? Uh -huh. Well, it depends whether you practice or not, but of course, if you talk about book one, okay, it takes about, if you're fast, about four to six months, all right? If you're slow, it can take eight months. So it really varies on, because it depends on how hard working you are. So, or roughly, but, to but be able I, to bring... When I teach my students, it takes about five years, oh. okay, or less. If they're hard working, it can be four years, all right? But... If you're lazy, it can be eight years. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's actually a very good set of books. Uh, who wants to market? Those who play strings. Who wants to try to market? Shallow here. And it's an ensemble book for books. How, how many months do you want to give them to try to market? I tell you, take this as a business opportunity. You don't need to throw up any money. Luck right? is... So it's like a marketing agent. So you Luck know, you is... You have okay. to go to a targeted market. Who loves and who plays piano, okay? I told her, I bring her here. I said, you have to look for your targeted market, okay? So her targeted market must be people who what? Play piano. Piano uh, uh, shop, piano teacher and all this. So if you do focus on that, you definitely can get sales out of it. Thank but you, you want Cecilia. to be exclusive, See? you get a Marketer, target. businesswoman. Here that may be interested. <laughs> All right, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Thank you very much. One minute's up. Okay. So, anyone of you wants to be her agent, approach her. Okay. Prep luck is preparation, meeting, opportunity. Unless you have passion for music, for piano, you will not enjoy this this type of uh, business. Am I correct? It's not a business for me. 
I don't play the piano well. <clears throat> I stand for ideas that is profitable. How to generate ideas that are profitable? One, through process of investigation, observation, and or brainstorming. There are many ways when you have an idea, like Roxana is the first time in Philippines, so she brought 40 kilos and she has made arrangement, 60 kilos. All of us carry so heavy for her. Free of charge. No, not free of charge. Anyway, <laughs> very heavy to bring 60 kilos. And tomorrow, is it tomorrow? Sunday, Monday. Monday, she will be speaking at the music department, try to promote her books. And she brought with her, how many, how many kilos? 60 kilos. Will you do that? Oh, that's a businesswoman in the making. <laughs> She's a music teacher. Okay. So, so she come here with 60 kilos to find out whether there's a market or not. Am I correct, Rosanna? Or she really wants to penetrate Philippines already? I have a bit of a market. I have already penetrated. Oh, penetrated. This one, she's second attempt. Come in with more. Okay. Two sure ways or that will help you, your business, to be profitable. What are they? Two sure ways that will make your business to be profitable. If you can concentrate on being the cheapest and the best. These are the two ways, cheapest and best. Some people are the cheapest but not the best. Some people are best but not cheapest. If you can manage to get cheaper and cheapest and best. You definitely will succeed. How many budget airlines are there? Which budget airline in Asia is number one? Budget airline. Asia. Why not Cebu Pacific? Cebu Pacific, I, uh, I try it many times. You have to wait hours in the airport. Sometimes whole day in the airport. So are they good? Lousy. Cebu Pacific. So I'm, I'm bad mouthing them. Air Asia is from where? Malaysia. They have a fleet of new airplanes. I think they've ordered 200 new airplanes, brand new, to do budget airline. So you think the, air, the, the, plane, will, the plane will spoil? No. Service is minimal, so they, their downtime is minimal. But Cebu Pacific, always this problem, that problem, this delay, that delay. Hmm? So they may be the cheapest, but they are not the best. Money will natural flow in. What is it? Being the cheapest and the best in your area. You definitely can make money. How many of you heard of this? Jodan? No, no. Uh, the Japanese brand called Uniqlo. How many of you heard of it? Is it available in? Is it available in Manila? What about here? Cavite? Also available. Oh, how does Uniqlo start? Anybody found out the history? They start during 1985, World Recession. That was very, Japan was very badly hit that period of time. So they started the business at that point of time. Very tough. But they became very quickly the number one clothing business in the whole of Japan. By being the cheapest and the best. They sell only basics at that point in time. How many of you bought any, uh, what was that brand called? Uniqlo clothing before? Yeah, few. The rest of you go and buy. I'm marketing it. <laughs> uh, I bought their shares. Okay, no, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> so, they, 
I, I'm in clothing business. So when I saw that in 1980s, I said, wow, this is really fantastic. During the worst time they started the business, worst time in the history, they started the business. And they were number one within two, three years. I go into their shop in Japan that time, huge shop. They are very daring. They buy products from China. Then the price is low, but they put in quality. They are very stringent with control, quality control, buying from China. So they were able to be cheaper than any Japanese brand. And because of their quality control, they are number one. Japanese uh, trust their brand. And they have no money in the pocket. Just like you have no money in the pocket during recession. You have no money in the pocket every day. They have no money when the recession is hits them. Ah, on that point of time, on that. How do you keep, how do you make money? Eh? How do you keep money? Any idea? Remember, Chinese are very Chinese businessmen are very stingy. How do you be stingy? You. You too. How do you be stingy? Huh? So how much you have to save? You make 1,000 peso, how much do you save? Typically, you know how, many, how, much, how many percent does chi uh, the Singaporean save? Make a guess. Singaporean ordinary people. Megan, come forward. Megan is an ordinary person. Come forward. Megan is a shopper. Ah, yeah, cannot say, but okay, she's typical Filipino. Okay. What about Shop Cheng? Come forward. Stand there, huh? How many of you think that she saves 10%? Raise your hand. Of what she earns. 10%. Nobody? You must vote at least once, huh? How many think 20%? How many of you think 30%? How many of you think 40%? How many of you think 50%? Half of what she earns. She, she saved it up. Wow. So can you follow her? So Ting, how many percent do you say, including CPI? So now you spend everything. Oh, you know, that's why she can come on this trip. Otherwise, she said, so expensive, the trip. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so uh, in Singapore, we have this enforced saving. So when we get our pay is 80%, because 20% will go into our central provision funds. So on top of that, I save around 20% of my uh, gross pay. And how I save it is that, mm, uh, you can check with me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> She's an accountant, so she knows how to save. So those of you who don't know how to save, find out from her. Would you mind sharing one minute how to save? So, Ching, would you one minute share with the group how to save? <laughs> 